Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Ronnie Isaiah, author of Kabbalah of Google, and we're here now with chapter 3. Chapter 3 is about the words. As every Kabbalist knows, this is a world of darkness, where what we see before us is not what it seems. Dark because it covers up the light of the Creator. Darkened by the enticing entertainment, the entertaining delicious desires in this material world. This is pretty much what shows up in most Google search results. Of course, Google Ads filters and algorithms probably taking a whole bunch of things from Kabbalah without even realizing it. Kabbalah reveals to the Kabbalist how the holy system of creation works from our earthly perspective. The accomplished Kabbalist is able to ascend, connect, and unite with the Almighty God. In this way, the Mikubal, Master Kabbalist, is able to, on a soul level, conduct submissions, separations, and sweetenings that in turn affect this physical world. Much of this is done with meditation, awaiting the right moment to make a certain expression of meaning. Google does nothing of the sort in any spiritual realm. Its realm is merely the world wide web and its hundreds of millions of search clients. Google nevertheless exemplifies how a different yet similar to creation system can continually work to index and save over and over again. The massive amount of information on the web, furthermore, we have to ask, how can these systems called search engines, technologies, resemble the flow of creation? The answer lies in the reason behind why people search for what. Kabbalah has a strong search element to it. The energy of each letter rests above the letter. Yet at the same time, while in word form, its energy resides in the world. Each letter brings its own energy to the word in a hovering state searching for expression which is the meaning of the word. Once assembled into the word the letter's power is harnessed creating the power of meaning. This power of meaning lives within and drives the permutations of the word in this world and that word can travel all the way to our source and the creator of the universe as in the example of prayer. On the mundane side of the fence, Google changes the way it gauges its result, allowing the themes to bring before the searcher all relevant content. The keywords search popularity influence the words ranking in other words that compete with it in a theme. Simply stated, the power does not come from God, so to speak. It comes from looking for what is hidden. One good example of how what everyone wants is hidden under a word that has a different essence is the word Apple. According to the millions of searches Google gives and serves up a day, Apple is a computer company. A person looking for where to buy fruit might need to add the word green or organic in the search, maybe including his zip code. Otherwise, it's iPhone first and fruit cocktail later, and it's all thanks to LSI. How does Google get away with copying this type of godly system and not get burned in damnation because of their intention. The meaning behind what drives them. An example, the not doing evil. When a desire to search for a certain keyword term flashes in a Googler's head, what becomes revealed is the way Google's ranking order works. To make it clearer, before a searcher searches, there is only a keyword term. That term is the entity or creation. With the universal powers of cause and effect utilized, a major tool in the world of the mystics. What is hidden is the results from the keyword term. The term is the cause and the results are the effect. The effect is what Google returns in ranking order. We all know that that effect has a big effect on people and business and how a subject is marketed, researched, and interpreted. Now this is where Google themselves use Kabbalah. They leave algorithms of what gets ranked on top, even though for the most part it is up to the searchers that use the search tool. Ultimately, it is Google filtering out sites that are less relevant and not what we are looking for. The more a term gets searched, the more relevant its results become. Let's delve further, keeping in mind that we are comparing things that really cannot be compared. God's system of creation exists in such a way where the Mukubal, master Kabbalist, can take something and permutated into something else with a tremendous oversimplification here. What happened was the letters in the word that is the name of that material thing 
is edited. Maybe just one letter is switched with one other letter. The Kabbalist invokes the name of Almighty God, and by permutating or changing the name of the thing, the creation, the thing itself is changed or recreated. Just by understanding their spiritual essence and seeing their essential relevance in the material world, the Mekubal is able to manipulate and permutate those words to alter their impact in any given situation. By changing them in time and space, physicality is, in effect, edited. For example, if a train was going to hit a car crossing its tracks, the Kabbalist could influence the essence of the train to slow down or the car to speed up, thereby avoiding the collision. After all, doing good is the mission. The Mikubal Kabbalist would take a few words from the Psalms of David and then with the power of speech call out the new permutation of letters and words. The desired effect would be to avoid the collision in the name of all that is good. And as it is said, there is no good other than Torah. All this the Kabbalist does by sweetening the severe outcome and bringing victory to the side of righteousness. Upon accomplishing a Kabbalistic mission, the outcome is an effort to make God's name great and praise him. So the Kabbalist is looking to make God's name great, but the internet marketers are just trying to make money, or are they? Not only. In fact, Hasidus explains that a webmaster or internet marketer has a holy job. And that job is where that person must find a way to express themselves. Themselves means spiritually and physically, a harmonious union of body and soul. The work that a person occupies themselves with is their holy service in this world, as is known by those who know. Every creation has its moment to shine and live up to accomplishing its purpose or existence. This purpose of a creation is also its meaning. Before getting more into how the words work, there is a small side story that has quite a high relevance at this point in our theme. And that is the story of Superman. In our mild-mannered hero's first length full feature, Adventure, Superman does good and uses Google's slogan on his enemies, Don't be evil! In that first movie, doing good meant saving an innocent guy from a lynching mob, finding the real murderer, rescuing a woman from her wife-beating husband, and of course saving Lois Lane from a violent hoodlum. Before the end of the flick, the Man of Steel ends up exposing a corrupt U.S. Senator who turns out to be a manufacturer of weapons of mass destruction and halting the South American war that the rogue Senator had engineered. Our much-loved superhero reflected much of the identity that his Jewish authors, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, in 1938 were masking. These deep-rooted emotions and evoking Jewish concepts are foundations in the world of Kabbalah, such as Tikkun Olam the repairing of the world through social action. More on this type of action hero is outside the scope of this book. However, feel free to have fun searching the Jewish Superman and learning, but keep in mind, what really drives your inquiring mind is its need to figure out how to repair the world. In this example, the first five links seem fairly credible. So we searched Superman Jewish. We're going to take a break here, and we'll be right back with the second part of Chapter 3, Kabbalah of Google, I'm the author, Ronnie Isaiah.